Hey, what's up guys, and it's part of the AI series, we're gonna create a simple pet that's gonna follow around our character, it's gonna be able to move, and we're gonna add some animations to it. So if you want to follow along exactly, there's gonna be a link in the description where you can download this cat model for free with the animations, or you can go to my brand new Patreon, and if you are a member, you can download it there as well. So like in the last video, we're gonna simply first create the blueprint class, and this is gonna be the class character, so I'm gonna call this BP cat. And then we can open it. In here we are gonna select our skeletal mesh. We are gonna add in our skeletal mesh. So for me that's gonna be that cat that I mentioned. I'm gonna just make it turn around 180 degrees. That way it's facing the arrow. And then for the capsule component I'm just gonna lower it to something like this. And then just move my mesh so it's at the bottom of it. That way it's not gonna float in the air. And then we are gonna go into the event graph. We can delete the event actor begin overlap and stick. Because we are only gonna be using the event begin play. Now we are gonna drag from it and search for AI move. Now there are two options here, we can either use the AI move tool, which is the simpler one, but the issue with it is that it's not gonna continuously track our character, which means we are gonna have to keep calling it over and over again. So what I'm gonna use is move to location or actor, which is gonna be much simpler for us, because we can click on this arrow, and then we have this use continuous goal tracking option, we can set it to true, and this way it's gonna keep tracking our character and moving towards it. Then we have the acceptance radius, I set this to let's say positive 100. This is just how far away from the character is it gonna stop, you can obviously adjust this. And for the goal actor I'm just gonna drag out and search for get player character. And then for the controller I'm gonna drag from it, get AI controller. And then I'm just gonna drag from the controlled actor and get the reference to self. And then we can just compile this and that's basically all we need here. So we can go into the level, we can drag in the BP cat, but it's not gonna move by its own. And the reason for that is because we need something called Nav Mesh Bounce Volume. So if you have the place actors on the side like me, or if you don't have it, you can go into the window and then you're gonna have place actors right here, so you can just activate that window. We can go into the search classes and search for Nav Mesh. And then we have this nav mesh bounce volume, we can just drag it in, and it's this box that we can just then extend to cover our entire level like this. When you press P on your keyboard, it's gonna show you which areas is it covering. If it's green, that means that the AI will be able to go there. So if I cover the whole level, it's gonna be roughly able to go everywhere. So we can press P again to get rid of that. And now when we go into the play, as you can see, the pet is following me around. It's really fast, but you can adjust that in the character movement in the BP cat. So I can just go into the walking and set max walk speed to let's say 200 or something like that. That way it's not gonna move that fast. Now let's create an animation blueprint and add some animations to it. So we are gonna go into the content driver, right click, then go into the animation and then we can create animation blueprint. And it's gonna ask us what skeleton do we want to create it for. So since I'm using the cat, I'm gonna go for the escalo poly cat and hit create. And I'm gonna call this ABP cat. And then we can open it. So for this we actually need also another thing which is the blend space because as you can see we have only the output poles here. So we need to go and create that blend space. Now generally you would want to create like a omnidirectional blend space but for a pet like this it's gonna be completely fine to create just 1D blend space because we are only really playing the running animations or the idle animation if it's not moving. So we are gonna go into the content driver, right click animation, then we are gonna go to legacy and then blend space 1D. We are gonna select the cat skeleton again or whatever you are using and I'm just gonna call this BS cat and BS stands for blend space. In here we are gonna have this one dimensional track so on the left side we can get this idle animation and we can put it here under none on zero. And as you can see now it's playing that idle animation so you can see the tail kind of moving around a little bit and we can just select it and make sure it's on zero and then we can get the running animations and place it here on the 100 under none and this is basically gonna create a blend space and what blend space is is basically blending between two or multiple different animations based on something and that's something we need to set up so under asset details under axis settings we have horizontal axis this is basically representing this axis right here so we can add a name to it so i'm gonna name it speed then we have the minimum access value and maximum, we can leave that, we can leave grid divisions and everything like that, and we can just save this and close the blend space. And then when we go back into our animation blueprint, as you can see on the right side in the asset browser, we have the blend space cat now, so we can drag it in and we can just plug it into the result. However, now it has that speed. This is a variable that basically determines the position of the blending. So it goes from zero, which would be the idle, and 100, which would be the running animation. So we need to input the 
the speed and the easiest way to do that is just drag from it promote it to variable i'm gonna leave the name as speed so we can go into the event graph we can go into the try get pawn owner and event blueprint update animation which is here by default we are gonna drag from the return value we are gonna search for get velocity and then we can just get our speed set it plug that into the event blueprint update animation and we want to plug a return value into it but we can't do that because one is a vector and the other one is a float so you can drag from the return value and search for vector length and that's gonna convert it for us into load and we can just plug that into the speed so now we can compile this save this and we can go into our cat blueprint and we are gonna select our mesh and make sure your animation mode is set to use animation blueprint and then under anim class we can slot in our abp cat compile this and uh, as you can see it's playing the idle animation so if we save this and go into play as you can see it's playing the running animation and then when it gets to me it swaps back to the idle animation because it doesn't have velocity and if i move it's gonna start playing this walking slash running animation again so i hope you found this helpful if you did leave a like and subscribe it helps out a lot there is gonna be a link to my patreon down in the description once again uh, if you want to support me there you can you'll get some cool benefits for it as well so thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one bye Bye.